environmental law overview. Environmental laws, as most other laws, are created at the federal level by Congress and must be signed and approved by the President. The major exception is when the President issues an executive order that does not need congressional approval. There are cases where a law is passed by Congress but not approved by the President, but Congress then overrides the President's veto. This occurred with the 1970 Federal Water Pollution Control Act, now the Clean Water Act. There are several processes for state laws where legislative bodies must approve a law and the governor must sign. Municipalities can also approve laws. In almost all cases, the state and local laws must at least be as stringent as the federal law. However, there are examples where a state prohibits more aggressive laws, such as the efforts in 2015 by Arizona State Legislature to curtail laws that ban plastic shopping bags in a county or a city. Similar to most laws, environmental laws were created to address a problem. One of the first recognized environmental laws is the Rivers and Harbors Acts of 1899. The law was created to regulate the dumping of items that might interfere with navigation of waterways as well as requiring the approval of the U.S. Congress to construct harbors, wharfs, bridges, dams, and dikes over or in navigable waterways. It did not address discharges of human waste or industrial effluent into water, but it did provide a foundation for modern environmental requirements. For each major environmental law, there was an event that served as a catalyst to the law's creation. The Clean Air Act was spurred by the smog that was polluting the Los Angeles Basin. The Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation and Liability Act, also known as Superfund, was our response to Love Canal. The Cuyahoga River fires helped to bring about the Clean Water Act. We will examine the Cuyahoga River fires in more detail in the readings and form this week. After a law is passed, the implementation is performed by an agency. Although we commonly think of the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, as the primary environmental agency, we'll discuss the role of other federal agencies such as the Department of Interior, where the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is housed, and the Department of Defense, as well as other agencies that have a role in environmental policy and law. The EPA, or other agency, develops regulations to carry out the intent of the law. As the regulations are developed, they are provided to the public for their review and comment. The proposed regulations are advertised in the Federal Register, although there can also be public hearings for proposed regulations having a large impact or those that garner much public interest. The agency recognizes all the comments, but it is up to the agency to incorporate any of the comments into the regulations. The regulations are published annually into the Code of Federal Regulations, where they become binding requirements. Environmental requirements are often incorporated into permits. Permits are issued by the EPA or the State Environmental Agency under the authority of many of the environmental regulations, including the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, and the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. Permits are issued to a specific business or institution and essentially permit the holder to pollute within certain limits. Permits do not stop pollution, but they do help to control them. Environmental policy, regulation, and law are a complex topic that we will explore in depth this term. The best definition I found for environmental law comes from the Environmental Law Handbook. Thomas Sullivan states, the environmental law system is an organized way of using all of the laws in our legal system to minimize, prevent, punish, or remedy the consequences of actions which damage or threaten the environment, public health, and safety. Consider this definition as we learn and discuss the most important laws governing our actions toward the environment.